There it is. I can hear you. Hey, uh, um, <laughs> thank you for the video of you all wishing me well on my trip. It was all great until some guy got in front and yelled, Go Seahawks! It was all good. I wanted to kind of dub him out, but I couldn't do it, man. Um, I'm here to tell you that I had fun, okay? But not too much fun. I enjoyed the, the football game. It was fun to go down there. I appreciate your grace and letting me go down there and, and missing church. I'm grateful for Nick uh, being willing to come in and share with you uh, last Sunday. And I just thank you for the, the message that you sent to me. I appreciate it very much. Um, I have to tell you this, and that is that uh, I've talked to several, uh, almost all of the organizations that we work with for the bowling. Uh, next week and the following probably two or three weeks, I'm going to put in, in the bulletin uh, how much money came in, how many families were blessed, how, much, how many $50 gift certificates we, we, we purchased with all the giving that was done. Uh, you guys, as always, this year more than ever, have risen beyond the occasion. Uh, and I've had all the organizations that I've contacted just profuse with praise uh, and thankful for you all. The bowling alley particularly just said, it's so great to have you all here and, and to have, uh, have your presence here. It's neat to see you all gather together and pray and, and stuff. It just really, really blesses my heart uh, so much that I get to worship with you, I get to serve with you and, and, and be a part of this family. But I do got to tell you this, I did call one, one organization and uh, this is a person who is 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 really deadpan. Okay, just you don't know whether what they're joking about or if they're joking about. Because <laughs> it's like, hey, thanks, appreciate you helping us out this year. And that's really about as excited as he seems to get. But this time I'm calling just say, I want to make sure everything went, went well and, and make sure I get confirmation on a couple things. And, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, everything went well. <laughs> and then he said, but uh, really. You gotta talk to some of your families, they're out of control. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, and I'm in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh no, what could have happened? What could have happened? I said, well, uh, what do you mean? I, I, is, should I be concerned or is this a good thing? He said, well, one of your families just went nuts. <laughs> Still, he hasn't given me any insight into whether this is good or bad. <laughs> They said they just blessed the socks off of a particular young lady and her daughter in a way that she was blown out of the water completely. And I said, so that's a good thing, right? I'm still trying to wait for him to say, thanks a lot, it was great, which is about all he got. And he said, just want to tell you, it's great to work with you guys. Uh, you bless our family's socks off. <laughs> great. <laughs> we'll be back next year. Okay? <laughs> Anyway, but hey, you know who we're talking about? <laughs> you guys went off, man. It was good. Anyway, thank you for being such a great church family and, and um, blessing so many people again uh, in a profound way. Next week again at Bulletin, I'll, I'll put in there everything that's taken place and, and the amount of uh, money and, and donations that came in and what we did with it. Uh, just phenomenal. Okay? Awesome. Great to be with you all. Let's pray. Father, we are... Uh, Grateful for this time of year. Grateful for uh, your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for being a God who loves us beyond measure, that blesses us abundantly, and that covers us with your grace, Father. Lord, we thank you for this time of year in which we have the opportunity to go above and beyond who we are and what our needs are to bless others. And God, I just pray for myself and for our church family that we look beyond just this time because the needs are always there. The needs for someone to be loved well, someone to be encouraged, someone to be blessed. Father, help us to be that kind of church continually, consistently, and without any kind of hesitation, Father. Lord, today as we gather and we celebrate who you are, that, Father, as we stand and we worship you as God, as King, and as friend, Father, that we would think about how grateful we are for all that you mean to us, the ways in which you have blessed us, the ways in which you have encouraged us, Father, for this time of year in which we seek that peace that comes from your Son, that, God, we would stand and we worship who you are with an unabandoned, uh, an abandoned heart just to be able to see you and to praise who you are. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Let's stand and sing.
us? How come I don't have a tie and a nice vest? And, and uh, Griff said, I'll talk to Grammy. <laughs> Grammy, you're on the spot, man. <laughs> Only one announcement to make, and that is Christmas Eve service at 6 o'clock. Okay, 6 o'clock candlelight service. Join us uh, for the night of being able to sing and quick message and then uh, light, uh, light our candles up, okay? I think that's the only announcement. Oh, one other thing. Youth group uh, is going to meet at the light? At the lights. At the lights down at the at, uh, locomotive park? Yes. Right? At the same time, maybe? Yes. Okay. We'll have some junk for me. We'll have some. That's, that's an invite. We'll have some junk for you to eat. How to do Okay. Just some, some snacks to eat. Cool. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing is, um, Christy and Eric, the last couple of years, uh, they have blessed our church, our little ones, with uh, uh, Christmas gift baskets downstairs filled with goodies. So, Eric, I know that you don't want this, but I want you just to stand up so we can say thank you to you, and then you give a hug to your wife. And I'm excited because I get a present that I wasn't counting on. I get a bow tie and a nice dress. <laughs> Kids, come on up and we'll pray over you, okay? Come on up. Stand up and say hi to one another. I, I, don't, I could have done that before I met her. Go for it.
do one more. <laughs> Uh, I do know that there are great families that are friends with them. 
and as well as the neighbors that are surrounding them will take good care of them. But, um, you know, here they are, uh, heading, they were heading someplace and, and uh, head-on collision, uh, and um, now they're sitting in, laying in a hospital. Uh, uh, fortunately, they're out of intensive care, uh, but their caretaking is going to take a long time. Uh, so I would like to make sure you write down those names, okay? Um, uh, and then as we pray over our offering, I'm going to lift them up as well, okay? Father, we uh, are grateful that you're a God who knows our needs and knows our prayers before we ever say them. Before they ever leave our lips, God, you are aware of them because of our hearts. And right now, God, as a church family, our hearts go out. Our prayers go out. Our concerns go out. And our uh, intention to continue to lift them up goes out, God, for Jacob. Father, continue to uphold this young man as he takes care of his son. Continue to uphold and strengthen him as he continues to come and seek his deeper relationship with you as all of us do. Lord, I know he's frustrated with the conditions that are going on in his body. I ask God that you would heal him as the greatest healer of all. That your will would surround him with your healing power. That your strengthening hand would overwhelm him. And that he would sense and know that great peace that comes from being close to you. And Father, for Wayne and Sherry, for this incredible accident, this situation in which, God, their bodies have now been ravaged and are in, in, out of intensive care but still being watched closely and monitored closely because the injuries are substantial. God, I pray for your healing hand to be on them, for all the physicians that will be taking care of them, for the friends and the families that are close to these folks, that, God, you would uphold them and strengthen them. Cover them all up with your peace, God. And, Lord, I know that all of us uh, experience life as a series of either coming into a, an intense time, a challenging time, being in the middle of it, or coming out of it. That is our life as, uh, as people on this planet. So, Father, as they are in the middle of it, as Jacob is in the middle of it, God, I pray your healing hand, your strengthening hand be all over them and all their family members, God. Father, for our offering, I, uh, I'm grateful for this church family's outpouring of support for different events and activities to bless people. I'm grateful for the opportunity you give to us to be able to serve others in a way that brings a blessing. And I pray for each of those families that were touched by one of our family members in giving to them. Pray for a strengthening hand beyond them as well. Uh, Lord, help them in their relationship with you. And God, for a church that seeks to spread your gospel message, to love others well, that God, you would hold us accountable to what you provide to us to do those works. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you. I just now noticed this. <laughs> Who's the guilty party? Who's the... Oh, I see you right there. But nice, man. Oh, he doesn't get any credit. No, no, no. He's nipped that in the butt right now. Mary, right? Mary, okay. thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, Merry Christmas. Um, you know... One of the uh, videos, I, and I debated whether I wanted to show it or not, but I, and I'm not this year, because I've showed it uh, several times. And it's uh, of, uh, during the World War, and I think it was World War II, in which the, uh, right on the battlefront, uh, the morning of Christmas morning, ceasefire was held, and the enemies who were uh, maybe a couple of hundred yards away from each other prior to the ceasefire were, were intent on killing one another, on, on, on hurting and, and maiming and winning a victory. Uh, by killing the others. And when, they, when the ceasefire happened, it was like silence. And one side stood up to find out if it was real. And slowly but surely, everybody stood up and they walked towards each other across this field and met. And for a period of time, there was this peace in the midst of this war. Uh, that peace that surpasses all understanding. I mean, that's what is mind-boggling about that statement, that surpasses all understanding. Here are people who are willingly engaged in trying to kill the other party, and for a moment they say, let's put the weapons down and let's shake hands, and let's be brothers on the battlefield. That is beyond understanding. What's even more beyond understanding is that they went back right to it afterwards. Um, God is a God, as we're going to read today, that wants us to experience peace. And peace is not, as you know, the absence of conflict. This conflict happens all the time. 
That peace that surpasses all understanding is the ability to feel, sense, know, and understand, and walk in the incredible depth of that peacefulness, even in the midst of conflict, of struggle, of divisiveness, and of the turmoil that the world brings upon us. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, is, is experiencing the peace of Christmas, not just for this week or on December 25th, but far beyond it. Far beyond this time in which we say Merry Christmas to one another, but experiencing the greatest gift uh, that we can experience. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look back on, on Christmas, and I'm going to talk about one of the gifts that I had when I was a little guy and what it meant to me, but one of the gifts that our son Josh used to always look forward to, and it wasn't Christmas until it was there, and I remember holding it back one year, because he got one of these bags of, of, uh, of hot chips. Jalapeno hot chips. That's what Josh looked forward to, man. He wanted that more than anything. And so one year I withheld it. And he, he'd had several presents that were great, but where were the hot chips? That was the present that he looked forward to. He wanted it something fierce. And now, as the kids have gotten older, Jennifer has created another little uh, uh, exchange that they look forward to. Is that, And that is, for the last several years, she gives each of them really, really nice blankets. Really nice blankets. This last year they were uh, somewhat like Pendleton, not official Pendleton, but they were very, very close to Pendleton blankets. Beautiful blankets that they each receive. When we receive a gift, it is up to us, it is on our shoulders to either accept it or not, open it or not, use it or not. This year, as we again celebrate Christmas, uh, it is up to us to receive it, to open it, and to take it in, to experience the incredible depth of love that Jesus Christ has for us, the incredible, powerful, beyond understanding peacefulness that he brings to us, the joy that surpasses happiness that he has in store for us, to receive it, to open it, and to know it well, to experience it. Isaiah 9, 6, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Now, I don't know about you, but if there's ever been times in your life when wisdom was needed, when you needed to, needed to talk to someone, someone who had good listening skills, the ears to hear, and then not just to echo back what you had said, but to give you wise counsel. That is our God. That is the wonderful counsel that He offers us, the wonderful gift of direction and guidance through His Word, and through the gift of others, being able to come in and speak into our life. He is also our mighty God, as we just read. Strength and power. The power to get through difficult times. The power that gives us the ability to love those who are difficult to love. Husbands and wives. Children and parents. Sometimes our own physical, fleshly love abilities wane. They diminish. They struggle. Unless I'm alone in that, raise your hand. If you've ever struggled loving your spouse. Anybody ever struggle loving your spouses? Okay. If some of you are lying your teeth out, man. <laughs> no, you are. This is church. You're not supposed to be lying. It's hard to be in a relationship that is that intimate, that time-consuming, that everyday kind of thing. But without the power and the strength of God, that gives us the ability to look past, we struggle to love. We struggle to love a world that's hard to love, but with the strength of Christ, with that mighty God aspect, and that Prince of Peace that we just read about, that gives us the ability to be gracious towards others, to be forgiving towards others, to love others well, so that they experience and know that the hand of God is real, it is absolutely real, and the gospel truth of his message is absolutely true. The world needs this. And when, when Jesus came, or when God came and, and spoke to the shepherds, I'm going to read out of Luke chapter 2. And I, I, I hate to say it, but every time I read this passage, I go to Charlie Brown's Christmas. I can see him, I can see him on everything, you know. And one of my, I've said this many times before, you get probably sick of hearing it, but whenever they break into that whole dance routine, there's the little guy who all he does is, that's this, you know. I, I get a kick out watching that guy, you know. But when this is read, there's some powerful truths in here 
about our walk with Christ and the incredible gift that he brings to us. I'm going to start in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. And they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. This group of low lives, this group of people that were shunned, this group of people who had no role in society other than to take care of those sheep out of town. Look who God chose to talk to. That is the God I know. The God that I know is the one who seeks out the lowly, the humble, particularly those who are not arrogant and religious, but those who are hungry for peace that comes from our God and humble enough to realize that it comes from outside of the world and outside of myself. These shepherds were frightened. Envision the fact that it's pitch dark outside, absolutely dark. And then all of a sudden, a bright light comes on them, a light that blows them out of the water and they're blinded for a while. And then not only that, they decide to have a group of angels come in and sing to this group of shepherds. And they are blown out of the water, absolutely. The angel, just like, he's, just like he talks to all of us when we are in struggles, when we are experiencing chaos, when we're experiencing confusion, or the challenge of either disease or financial problems or whatever it might be, the word that the angel gives to these guys that he gives to us all the time is this, there's no need to be afraid. There's no need to be afraid because the God of peace is with you. And he, in that last verse it says, and on earth, Peace among men with whom he is pleased. Well, Bill, how do we please our God? How is it that we please God? It's impossible to please God, isn't it? He's pleased this morning with you all. He's pleased with every gift that you gave to those people. He was very pleased when Griffin said, Grammy's going to give you a new outfit. <laughs> He's very pleased with actions that we take out of selflessness for others. But Hebrews 11.6 gives us an, another insight into how our God is pleased with us. It says this, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. But without faith, the active belief that Jesus is absolutely real, that He lived, He was born. We don't just read a story in a storybook that says you know, that this little babe was born in a manger. We don't sing the songs and just sing them. But it's an active belief that goes beyond the moment and carries on our life. Those shepherds, when the lights disappeared, they remember the angels told, the angel told them, you will find them. You will find him in a, in a manger. Okay? When those lights and everything disappeared, those, those shepherds probably looked around at each other and went, huh, did you really see that? Now, if Slacker Bill would have been in the group, no, I don't think I saw that, man. That was too much. But they all immediately left. They went to seek him out. The faith to say, that is true, and I'm going to seek it out. And they did. They sought out that. But without faith, is it impossible to please him? For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is a rewarder, not only for those who are lost that seek Him out. He is a great rewarder of that, because that is where we used to all be, lost in the darkness without a relationship with Christ. Lost in the depths of hell. And all of a sudden, we accept who Jesus is, out of a firm, persistent pursuit of a God who loves us and wants us in relationship with Him. And we give our life to Christ. But we diligently seek Him after we come to Christ. It's, the game is not over the moment we give our life to Christ. The game is just really beginning. 
the tip-off, so to speak, in basketball. It's just beginning to take place. And are we and I, are you and I diligently seeking Him in that relationship every day? Seeking what He wants out of us. I don't know if you've seen this movie or not, but I, we went to uh, uh, the movie Harriet this past weekend. Harriet Tubman. Great movie. Really good movie. Okay, Powerful story about this young, uh, uh, young girl who breaks free and runs to Philadelphia and then begins to become the greatest conductor ever of the Underground Railroad under great threat, great threat. This woman pursued slave after slave after slave after slave to free them. And one of the lines in there is really good because she, she calls slavery what it is, a great sin that this country entertained. Phenomenal statement. And she hated to sin. And her communion with God was phenomenal. She followed wherever God led her. She followed His voice. And what's amazing is that after a period of time of going 100 miles and freeing some slaves and then bringing them back to Philadelphia, a law is passed that may, basically makes it almost impossible to keep Slaves who had been enslaved had become stolen and brought to Philadelphia. That now that, that they, they said you have to go all the way to Canada. 600 miles. And she's standing in the midst, and this was such a great line as well, because to me it epitomizes uh, our church in this country. And that is that uh, these folks are, she's telling them that I'm going to go up, I'll take them to Canada, 600 miles. And they're all saying, you can't do that. The pressure would be too much. It would be too, too ridiculous, too, uh, um, too threatening, as if it wasn't threatening before. Okay? But she said, you have all become comfortable in your freedom. They'd forgotten, if they ever experienced slavery, they had forgotten what it was like. I think there are times in our own life, in my own life, when I get comfortable with my freedom in Christ. Remember, it was for freedom that what? Christ set us free. Freedom to go out and pursue and to diligently seek and be with Him and to serve one another. To serve one another consistently and continually. She was willing, you know how long it took to travel? 600 miles in those days by foot? About a month. About a month. And that's just strolling, you know, without any anything to interfere. Without shrubbery, without venomous snakes, without people pursuing you, ready to shoot you on sight. Almost a month that it took them to travel that distance. But this young woman, Harriet Tubman, listening only to the voice of God. What did the voice of humans say? Oh, don't do it. You can't do that. It's too much of a threat. It's a threat to us. She didn't listen to that voice. She listened to the voice of her God. The voice of her God said, we will do this, and I will lead you. And they, together, experienced peace in the midst of that turmoil that she knew she was doing the right thing. You should see it if you haven't seen it yet. God gave her the peace that surpassed all understanding to go against those pressures. Whether, and think of yourselves, whether it's pressure of work, whether it's pressure of family, whether it's pressure uh, weaving within a religious church, not a relational church, there are pressures. Our job is to hear the voice of God, the wise counsel, the wonderful counsel, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, so that we sense and know the direction that He calls us. God knows what you and I need. God knows what we need, not what we want, what we need. And he offers a savior, a savior to believe in, to treasure, and to diligently seek a deepening relationship with him. Our job each and every day that we wake up, the moment we give our life to Christ, is to open the present, receive it, and to seek to let it in deeper and deeper into our life, to change us, to make us different, to make us more powerful in our abilities to love beyond our own flesh, to be able to face chaos when it comes in, to be able to face a world that comes against us with confidence, and to experience that deep, deep level of peace that surpasses all understanding by drawing near to Him. The gift of Christmas 
which God offers to everybody, everybody. It's not just for a select few or a particular party or a particular country. It is for every person. That's why I loved it when, when Harriet Tubman called slavery what it is, a sin against humanity. Our God wants us to experience the peace that gets us through everything, everything that comes into our life. doesn't mean it's going to be easy at all. But will we open it? Will we receive it? And will we take it in and be active with it? Or will we, like we do with some of our Christmas presents or birthday presents, open it and go, oh, that's really nice, put it over here, and it never gets tapped into. It never gets looked at. It never gets used. When I was a little guy, I got a, uh, anybody remember Stingray bicycles? The big banana seat and those cool handlebars, man, that was awesome. I got one of those. And I took meticulous care of that thing. It never once spent a night outside. <laughs> that thing came in the house with me. I took it up to my bedroom, carried it up the stairs, and I looked at it, just looked at it every night before going to sleep. Wow. It was awesome. I put a couple of mirrors on it, which I think back on this, it must have been just obnoxious to see me ride around. A couple of mirrors looking, because I got to see who's behind me, man. I got to see who's behind me. One night I left it out, and it got stolen. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. I prized that present. I used it. I took care of it. Do we do the same with our relationship with Christ? Do I do the same thing in my relationship with Jesus Christ that I prize it so much that I take care of it? I take care of it in a way that says, give me some wise counsel today. Lead me where I need to go. Lead me into fellowship that's sweet. Lead me into a situation in which I'm with someone who needs the love, attention, and encouragement that only you can give through me, God. Lead me in those directions so that I might be able to be your, your hands to someone who needs it. I'm going to read, uh, over the, if you haven't been here for the last few weeks, um, I have been <coughs> journeying through 1 Thessalonians. And I thought I'd be remiss if I didn't at least read one that passage from this book. So I'm going to turn to 1 Thessalonians and I'm reading from chapter 2, which is where we ended last time. And what I like about this is that Paul, who's written this letter to the Thessalonian church, the believers, is writing it to you and I, to us today, to understand what's going on in his life. And so I'm going to read verse 13 only. There's a whole lot of path, there's a whole lot of scripture that's before this, obviously, and, and Paul is wanting this group of believers to understand the importance of being close to Christ, of understanding the Word of God, and to be a model, an ambassador of Christ to the world around them. And in verse 13, Paul says this to them, and for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received from us the word of God's message, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is. The Word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Paul was pleased that this group of believers accepted the words that he had shared, the letters that he had written as the Word of God. Not as a human being writing to him, but as the Word of God. And who is the Word of God? Jesus, Jesus Christ is the Word of God. So in saying this, not only did they receive this written word or the letters, but they received the living word of Jesus Christ. That is the great gift that Christmas is. And that every day before and after Christmas is all about whether we receive, open, and use, and get to know the word of God, Jesus Christ in our relationship with him. Or if we just kind of put it off on the shelf and just leave it over here. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That is what this church, this group of believers in Thessalonica accepted and took as reality. The gospel message that Jesus lived, He was born, He lived, performed miracles, taught, suffered, died, and was buried. End of story, right? New, no, not at all, resurrected, to give you and I eternal access. That's a gift that cannot be measured. That's a gift that has to continually be opened, to be continually received, and to be continually applied to our life. 
when we invite the Holy Spirit into our life, He doesn't come in and just sort of sit down in a rocking chair and go, hey, this is nice. If He did, we would never be changed. He comes in with a hammer, sometimes a sledgehammer, nails, some two-by-fours, a whole bunch of other stuff because He's coming in to what? Remodel. Remodel the home that we invite Him into. To reapply that new life so that we are changed when we go out into the world. We all understand the story of the innkeeper who had no room in the inn. And sometimes when we read that, we kind of, at least for me, I get to go, what's wrong with you? Don't you know who's there? And he didn't. He had no idea. All he was doing, the innkeeper was so busy taking care of the full inn. It was, it was packed. He had a full house, grateful probably for the fact that his his inn was full. And he had no room. It's easy for us to go, what, a, what an idiot. He was too busy, too caught up with his job, with his pressing life, to realize what was in front of him. That is you and I so often in our walk with Christ. That is us at times. Too busy, too caught up to realize what's in front of us. And that is the love of a Savior who willingly came to this earth and died an excruciating death so that we could have access to him through his resurrection. The rich young ruler was too caught up in his possessions and the world to accept Jesus as king and savior. And the religious leaders of the day, and even today, are too caught up with religiosity and self-righteousness to understand the nature of a relationship with Jesus that goes far beyond church. It goes into a world that needs it. You and I cannot miss the greatest gift of all. As we've given our life to Christ, we've opened that gift up. As believers, we've accepted it and received it. Now remember, I've said this many times before, and you've probably heard it in other churches, and that is, even the demons, what? Believe. They're not saved. What's the difference? Their belief is, yeah, that's him. The belief that the scriptures talk about, that we talk about, is the belief that says, come in and take over, take all of me, get rid of the old me, and move me forward and change me. So that I can love others better. I can understand self, selfless love better. Sacrificial love better. So that a world that is in need experiences deep love, deep compassion, deep experiences of joy that come from people who understand that relationship with Him. We cannot miss that. The enemy's greatest strategy is to distract you and I. To distract the world with chaos. With misdirection. He's the great liar. His effort is to take our eyes off of the reality of Jesus Christ and put them on the circumstances of the world and the pressures. And not see all those things through the lens that is Jesus Christ that allows me to walk in faith, strength, and peace. We can experience this greatest gift. And how do we experience it? I'm going to ask you to turn and be ready to close off. Philippians. Just turn back a few pages from where we were at. Philippians chapter 4. This is also a very common one, okay? Scripture. The greatest gift of all comes as we apply our life to a relationship with Jesus. Verse 4 of chapter 4 of Philippians says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence in anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. This is hard, y'all. But this is how we experience the peace of God. Because every one of those adjectives, every one of those descriptors is Jesus, is His Word, the Word of God. It is honorable, it is right, it is pure, it is lovely, it is of good repute, it is excellent, and it's worthy of praise. We are to let our minds dwell on these things. 
The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, this is a key to experiencing it. Practice. Practice these things, and the God of peace shall be with you. To dwell means to actively be in it. To practice means to engage in the work of faith. To engage in it. I'm going to talk about my quarterback. <laughs> yeah, Howard, I know we're down 14 nothing already. Man. I understand that, buddy. <laughs> to the Titans. Um, there was a video uh, that my boss sent to me. And I've seen it a couple times before that. But it shows practice. Practice is over with, okay? And they're in the facility. And I'm talking about Drew Brees. First class, okay? Whatever team you'd have been on, first class. Everybody's gone. And, and Reggie Bush is the one who is, is filming this piece. And he's all the way down at one end of the indoor facility. He's filming one person all the way down at the other end. Everybody's gone. And it's an hour after practice. And Drew Brees is down there going through repetitions by himself. Practice. Practicing these things. Are you practicing? Am I practicing? The gift that God wants us to open is the gift of truth, the gospel message of Jesus Christ, the incredible peace that comes when we draw near to Him. And then to practice these things every day. Every day in our life. Practicing them with those who are hard to love. Those who are difficult to be around. Giving them the opportunity to experience Jesus because we, you, love well. Your witness at the bowling alley is pretty profound. I don't know if you know that. Your witness at the bowling alley spoke to all those people who were working there that night. The lady who kept, I mean, I, the other thing is, is, I don't know if she's always as busy, but the woman who kept bringing out food, she put on miles that night, man. And afterwards, when I was going in to get Jennifer's order, she said, you guys are the nicest group of people we've had in here for a long time. You know how often I hear that about you all? You are practicing. You are practicing. How many of you ever had a phone call in which they put you on hold? <laughs> how many of you know where I'm going? <laughs> I got put on hold yesterday. I wanted to talk to the folks at Winco. Okay? And, and she starts to talk to me, and I'm starting to say, she said, oh, can you hold on, sir, just a little bit? Okay, yeah, I can hold on. Click. She goes and she's gone. For a while. And then they play that really neat music in the background. <laughs> and it's a long time, right? And then finally she goes back, sir, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> can you hold a little bit longer? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. And she disappears. <laughs> three times, three more times that happens, okay? And um, I wasn't going, praise God for the delay, okay? but I was very courteous. Okay? She gets on and, she, and, and I begin to speak about what, what I'm calling about. She says, Bill, is this you? <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't go, yeah, I can wait, I can wait. She's been an obnoxious human being. But I was, at that moment, I said, God, thank you for giving me the moment of grace. Help me to say, okay, I can wait. I can wait. Because in my flesh, I wanted to say, no, I can't wait. Practicing these things takes effort. And again, we cannot earn our way to heaven. It's not out of self-effort that we get to heaven. It is about accepting Jesus Christ, believing in him as a Savior, and walking with him in relationship. But it requires, as we've read over and over in, in, in Scripture, it requires practice. It requires purposefulness. And every morning we wake up, open up the gift, receive the gift, and walk in the gift. Put the gift to work. The innkeeper, that's us. Because you and I are the innkeepers of our mind, of our heart, and our soul. Don't be too busy. Don't be too caught up to say, come in. Because as it says in Revelation, he's a God that just knocks. Come here. Let me in or not. Please let me in. This Christmas, know the reason for the season. Understand that Jesus 
wants nothing more than a deep, personal, intimate, daily relationship with each of us, with you, so that you can go out and love others better, love others well, can love your family in a way that they deserve, can be the incredibly out of control families that gift people. I, I you know, I think back onto that now. I, I, I'm, I'm so blessed that Steve Thomas, in his dry way of talking, said some of your families are out of control. <laughs> I want to go to him and say, I'm so glad you told me that, because that just fills me up. Because that young woman got her socks blown off with blessings. Every family you touched, every family that you said, I want to give for, was touched by the hands of Christ because you were willing to practice, to practice your faith. That's what we're called to do. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, uh, it's just such an understatement to say thank you. It's an incredible understatement to say thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, beyond just saying, help each of us, help me to live out a thankful, grateful life. Help me each day to open up your present, to receive your present, and to put it to use to dwell upon good things, to dwell upon your word, to dwell upon your peace, your joy, your strength, and your love. Help me to walk firmly on your strength, God. Help each of us that as we leave this building today, and as we go forward into Christmas Day, that we don't get caught up again, which is so easy to do, in all that we think we need to do. But in the middle of that, to take the time to just breathe deeply, to be still and to know, as your word says, that you are God. That is the greatest present of all. Father, help us to remember those that we prayed for today, that we are purposeful with that, and that we lift one another up as believers, as church family members of Granite Lake. Father, we love you and we thank you. And when we say Merry Christmas to others, God, we are saying we love you, Jesus Christ. And we love others well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. Pretty weak comeback, but that's okay. <laughs>